predator becomes prey in the Florida Everglades as hundreds of hunters descend on the Sunshine State. The war for the Florida Everglades took a weird turn when the state unleashed a fleet of cybernetic rabbits. Florida is deploying robotic rabbits to help capture invasive Burmese pythons in the Everglades. These decoys had fur, heartbeats, and smelled like prey. They were designed to catch pythons, but nature had other plans. Local alligators tore the robots to shreds, costing the state a fortune. It seemed like a total loss. However, what most people don't realize is that this failure was actually a breakthrough. The robots hadn't failed. They had just discovered the invisible highways the snakes used to travel. Blueprint for a trap. Florida is currently fighting a losing war. The Everglades, a massive river of grass, is being eaten alive from the inside out. The enemy is the Burmese python, a silent monster that has taken over the wetlands. After years of failing to catch them by hand, the state decided to get creative. They launched a secret high-tech plan that sounds like science fiction. They built an army of robotic rabbits. These weren't just stuffed animals thrown into the grass. Each decoy was a masterpiece of engineering, costing nearly $4,000 a piece. They were designed to look, feel, and smell exactly like a marsh rabbit, which is the python's favorite snack. The engineers covered them in synthetic fur and installed thermal pads inside. These pads heated up to exactly 99 degrees Fahrenheit to mimic the body heat of a living animal. But they didn't stop there. The crazy part is they gave the robots a scent. Tiny emitters sprayed a chemical musk that smelled just like a real rabbit. Some of them even had small motors to make the ears twitch. The idea was to anchor 120 of these robots in Python hotspots. When a snake attacked, a camera would trigger, alerting a team to come and remove the invader. At first, it worked. The cameras captured massive 15-foot snakes striking the decoys. But then, disaster struck. The alert started going off like crazy, but it wasn't pythons. It was alligators. The gators saw the warm, twitching rabbits and did what gators do. They crushed them. Dozens of expensive robots were destroyed in seconds. The alligators were treating the high-tech traps like chew toys. To make matters worse, the pythons, sensing the aggressive gators, stayed away. The project looked like a total financial train wreck. But amidst the metal and plastic wreckage, a data analyst noticed something strange on the surviving hard drives. Whatever the robots were tracking, it wasn't random movement. Eating the Swamp Alive To understand why Florida was desperate enough to use robot rabbits, you have to understand the enemy. The Burmese python is not supposed to be here. It was born in the jungles of Southeast Asia, but in the 1980s and 90s, they became popular pets. People bought them when they were small, cute, and manageable. But here's the catch. These things don't stay small. A Burmese python can grow to 20 feet in length. That is longer than a pickup truck. When the pets got too big, lazy owners dumped them in the canals. Then came Hurricane Andrew in 1992. The storm destroyed reptile breeding facilities, releasing hundreds of snakes into the wild at once. For the pythons, the Everglades was paradise. It was warm, wet, and full of food that had never seen a giant constrictor before. The native animals didn't stand a chance. Raccoons, possums, and bobcats had no evolutionary fear of these snakes. They were sitting ducks. The result was a massacre. In some areas of the park, the population of small mammals dropped by over 90%. The swamp, which used to be noisy with the sounds of life, went quiet. And that is putting it lightly. We are talking about an ecosystem collapse. The pythons ate everything. Biologists found deer hooves inside snake stomachs. They even found snakes that had tried to eat alligators. But the scariest part is how fast they multiply. A single female python can lay up to 100 eggs at a time. Imagine that. One snake becomes 100 snakes in a single season. And because they are apex predators, nothing hunts them. Their camouflage is perfect. A 10-foot snake can hide in six inches of grass and you would never see it until you stepped on it. The numbers grew from a few hundred to tens of thousands. Some estimates say there could be hundreds of thousands of them out there right now. The state knew they had to do something drastic. They couldn't just let the park die. But every traditional method they tried was met with failure. 
The snakes were winning and humans were running out of time. They needed a solution that didn't rely on human eyes. When brute force isn't enough. Before the robots Florida tried to fight back with people, they launched the Python Challenge. It was a massive event where they invited the public to go into the swamp and hunt the snakes. It sounded like a good idea. Thousands of people signed up armed with machetes and determination. But after weeks of hunting, they only caught 68 snakes. 68. Out of hundreds of thousands, it was a drop in the bucket. The problem was the terrain. The Everglades covers 1.5 million acres. It is hot, humid, and full of sawgrass that can slice your skin open. Finding a snake that doesn't want to be found in that mess is almost impossible. So they called in the professionals. The state hired elite hunters and even brought in snake-sniffing dogs. Two dogs, Truman and Eleanor, became famous for their ability to sniff out pythons. A dog's nose is thousands of times more sensitive than a human's. They could smell the musk of a snake hiding deep in the brush. The dogs were effective. They found huge snakes that humans had walked right past. But there was a major problem, the heat. It gets to over 100 degrees in the swamp. The dogs could only work for short periods before they risked heat stroke. They needed cooling vests and special boots to protect their paws. Plus, you would need thousands of dogs to cover the whole park. It just wasn't scalable. The state was spending millions of dollars on hunters and dogs, but the snake population kept growing. They even tried Judas snakes. This is where they catch a male snake, put a radio tracker on him, and release him. The hope is that he leads hunters to the females during breeding season. It worked, but it was slow. You had to track one snake at a time. They needed something that could work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, without getting tired or needing a paycheck. That is why they pivoted to the robotic rabbits. They thought technology would solve the problem that biology couldn't. But when the robots were smashed by the alligators, it felt like the final nail in the coffin. It seemed like the swamp had defeated the machines, too. But the scientists were about to realize something crucial. The robots had failed as traps, but they excelled as spies. Python's one weakness. This is where the story gets crazy. The team of scientists looked at the data from the 120 robots. They fed all that information, the times of attacks, the temperature logs, the motion sensors, into a powerful artificial intelligence system. They included the data from the broken robots and the ones that were never touched. The AI started crunching the numbers, looking for patterns that the human brain is too slow to see. And it found one. A big one. The data revealed that the pythons weren't just wandering around aimlessly. They were using specific routes. They had secret highways through the sawgrass and the water. But here is the catch. The AI figured out why they were using these routes. It turns out the pythons were terrified. Remember those alligators that smashed the robots? Well, adult alligators are one of the only things in the swamp that can eliminate a python. The snakes knew this. The robots had accidentally mapped out the predator hierarchy of the swamp. The pythons were moving in very specific ways to avoid the big gators. They moved at certain times of day and stuck to certain corridors where the alligator population was low. The failed robots had actually acted like a sonar system. By seeing where the robots got destroyed by gators, the scientists knew where the pythons wouldn't be, and by seeing where the robots sat untouched, they found the safe zones. The AI used this negative data to build a three-dimensional ghost map of the python population. It predicted exactly where the snakes would be traveling and when. It was like cracking the Enigma code. The snakes thought they were invisible, but their fear of alligators had made them predictable. The scientists realized they didn't need to lure the snakes to the traps anymore. They realized they could go to the snakes. The tables had turned completely. The hunters didn't need luck. They had a schedule. They knew where the snake highways were. Now it was time to go on the offensive. The final verdict. Armed with the AI's ghost map, the strategy shifted overnight. The state stopped waiting for the snakes to come to them. They stopped setting traps and hoping for the best. Instead, they went on the offensive. They sent teams directly to the coordinates the AI predicted, deep into the most hostile parts of the glades. And getting this, the accuracy wasn't just good, it was absolutely terrifying. 
they weren't just finding lone snakes slithering across a path anymore. The algorithm had cracked the code of their social behavior. The map led hunters to deep, hidden pockets of the swamp, areas surrounded by sawgrass so thick it cuts like a knife. These were the spots where the massive females were gathering to lay their eggs. We are talking about removing single snakes that were carrying 50, 60, or even 80 potential hatchlings inside them. In just one month, using the new data, hunters removed more invasive pythons than they had in the entire previous year. They found massive nests buried in brush that no human eye would have ever spotted. The efficiency skyrocketed. But here is the catch, and this is where things start to get strange. As the AI processed terabytes of data from the swamp, operators started noticing anomalies. The ghost map wasn't just flagging pythons. There were reports of heat signatures and movement patterns that the algorithm couldn't identify. Some of the data points suggested creatures that were far too large to be pythons, moving with a speed that defied the physics of a reptile. This has led to some wild theories among the people on the ground. Some believe the AI inadvertently picked up on the legendary skunk ape, Florida's version of Bigfoot, hiding in sectors of the Everglades that humans haven't touched in decades. The software flagged these unknowns as high-probability targets, but when teams arrived, the area was empty, just matted grass and a lingering, unidentifiable smell. It makes you wonder if the technology found something we weren't supposed to see. And then there is the super snake theory. The data suggested that after the first wave of efficient hunting, the remaining pythons started to change. The AI began tracking shifts in behavior that looked suspiciously like adaptation. We aren't just talking about hiding better, we are talking about pythons that stopped moving during the day entirely, or snakes that began using the vibration of the airboats to triangulate the location of the hunters. Some researchers believe that by using AI to hunt them, we might be accidentally forcing their evolution into overdrive, creating a smarter, more elusive predator that knows it's being watched by a machine. So, here is the deal. The robotic rabbits were a disaster as physical bait. They got crushed, eaten, and drowned. But as data collectors, they were the most successful experiment in the history of the Everglades. They proved that you can't just fight nature with muscle you have to fight it with information. However, the implications go far beyond snakes. The war isn't over. There are still thousands of pythons out there, and they are adapting every day. But for the first time in 30 years, humans have the upper hand. We know how they move, we know what they fear, and we know where they sleep. But it brings up a scary thought that nobody wants to talk about. If we can use AI to track invisible animals in a swamp just by analyzing their fear responses and movement patterns, what else can this technology track? The Everglades experiment showed that nothing stays hidden forever if you have enough data. Some conspiracy theorists are already claiming that the snake war was just a testing ground. If you can map the behavior of a cold-blooded reptile in a chaotic environment, tracking a warm-blooded human in a city is child's play. The technology perfected in the mud of Florida could be the ultimate surveillance tool, capable of predicting your location before you even decide to go there. The robotic rabbits might be gone, resting in pieces at the bottom of the swamp, but they left a heavy legacy. They taught us that sometimes a spectacular failure is just a success in disguise. The pythons are still there waiting in the grass, but now they are being watched by something that never sleeps, never blinks, and never forgets. And the real question is, who or what is next on the list? So the $4,000 robots got smashed, but they saved the day. Do you think using AI to track animals is a brilliant move, or is it a slippery slope to surveillance we aren't ready for? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this mystery, hit that like button and subscribe for more.